the image you see to the right of me, your left, uh, is an image of someone I took a picture of a couple years ago, actually. And this was an issue of visual ungroundedness. His visual system is creating the inability for him to position his body over his left leg. In fact, it is preventing him from even knowing, and this is the big part, from even knowing that his weight is not over his left leg. So let's look at the first picture on, on my left. Uh, the picture on his right leg, we'll call that right stance. When I asked him to stand over his right leg, put his weight on his right leg, that's what he did. Not bad. His weight is, I wouldn't even say it's perfect, but it's not bad. His weight is clearly shifted over his right leg. In that position, his brain is sensing the ground, the big red circle, underneath his right foot. Okay, so this is my right side. When I position my body weight over my right leg, I, my brain senses pressure coming up underneath my right foot. A lot of pressure because my weight is over there. If you look at the second picture, I asked him to put his weight on his left leg, and that is what he did. He is not on his left leg. It's not even, those two pictures are not the same. The, the, the picture on the left is not, the rep, is not a replica of the picture on the right, just on the other side. His body weight, his pelvis, if you look at his, his, his pelvis orientation, it's still turned to the right. He has more weight on his right foot than on his left foot. His body weight is still over his right leg and to the front but he actually thought his weight was on his left leg. Now this, is, this might seem extreme, but I, I was this same person because of my visual system. And for everyone watching this, if you understand postural restoration or if you don't, there is a little bit of this going on in everybody because of the way the asymmetry of how our brain processes sensory input. It prefers sensory input from the right side through the peripheral vision and the faster right ear and the bigger right diaphragm, but also functionally on the inside, our anatomy is designed so that's easier for us to stand on our right leg and breathe than it is to stand on our left leg to breathe because of the big difference between those two diaphragms, which I've shown many, many, many times. So the picture on the right, that is very normal. The picture on the left, that is a little bit extreme. Most people can get their weight over their left leg but what they don't realize is that their upper body is still to the right. So, so here's my left. They'll shift their weight back on their left leg, but, then, but they don't realize that their upper body is still kind of leaning to the right. But this gentleman, uh, he had no clue where his left side was. Now, again, I would have been the, kind of the same situation, but anyone who comes in to see me for help with posture restoration or pain is, is doing this a little bit. Their sense of what is left has been completely altered because of being on the right side for too long. Now, in my, now this, you might say, oh, well, that's gonna have an issue with the lower body. And it will, back pain, knee pain, any, any type of pain in the lower body, because this person, this brain does not know where the left side is. So they're effectively working on one side through all their movements, walking, running, lifting, whatever it's gonna be. But the biggest issue in my mind is his neck. The only way a neck can side bend and rotate is if you have two sides available to you. So when you go to your right side, your neck needs to be able to side bend to the left and rotate to the left. That's how you stay straight when you're on your right foot. When you go to the left leg, the opposite has to happen. That left shoulder has to drop down. Your neck needs to side bend to the right and rotate to the right while you're on your left leg. This gentleman and most people and almost everybody who comes in to see me is stuck on that right side. So they're never getting that alternating neck movements. And that tightens up everything in your body. But it, and it will also change the way that your brain is perceiving sensory input because it's all coming from the right side. The left side's behind, the right side's in front. So you're getting more air through the right nostril, more air and sound through the right ear, and more visual input through that, uh, eh, I can't say that. Uh, all together, it's producing a right dominance sensory integration. That's a little complicated, so I'm not gonna get into it too much, but just realize everything is altered when you're constantly in this position, which he is even when he's on his left leg. And, and this is happening with basically everybody to one degree or another. For most people, it's so small that it's not even an issue. It's when that 
right side dominance becomes too dominant is where we start to have these problems that the left side completely drops off. And that's what's happening in this picture. Now, he actually had glasses prescribed to him from an optometrist that had a, um, uh, a prism in it. Now, he may have needed those to see properly, to read. I can't remember what the situation was because it was about two years ago. He may have needed those glasses to see properly. But the problem was that optometrist never checked to see what it would do to his body. So what we know is that those glasses were messing him up. When he closed one eye, and I, can't, I don't think it mattered which eye it was, he could then actually get his weight on his left leg. But once both eyes were open, and, once he was, and he was aware this was happening, his body, so he was on his left leg, if he had one eye closed, but if both eyes opened, his body, and he could not stop the process, his body would shift back to that right side. Because when your brain is threatened because of improper visual input or two eyes, which are really your brain, that are not cooperating as a team, there's threat, there's divergence, there's a problem because that brain is not getting equal input on both sides, there's threat, and so the brain will put you over on the dominant, more stable side. Doesn't mean that right side is functioning properly, but it's, it's safer on that side. And that's the left AIC, right BC, right TMCC pattern. But in that position, he's sensing the ground underneath his right foot, and this is, I'm leading this to something else. Uh, he's, his brain is sensing the ground underneath the right foot too much and not enough underneath the left foot, not because there's anything wrong with his feet, which will be stuck in a supinated and pronated position, but because his visual system will not allow alternation between sides. Now, if you're in this position for two, and a neck that cannot rotate, which means the only, so if you can't rotate your head and neck and it can't side bend appropriately, it has to come forward. And now you're in a forward head posture. And now maybe your tongue starts to do weird things. Now you become a neck breather. And now your eyes start to tighten up a little bit because you're hyper-focusing. Basically, your sympathetic nervous system starts to go on overdrive, and that's your vagus system, the ventral vagus system what, that you use to speak and, and, and chew and, and sing and swallow and hear. These are all the sensory areas of your body that you use to interact with your environment and other people, and that can all get screwed up because of the situation that you're looking at. Now, if you also are in this position, remember, a little bit of this is in everybody that you see because of this right dominance. If this situation goes on for too long, this is what's gonna happen. Four floors. Four number floor, floor number four, you'll see is on the outside of the right foot. That will be a foot that's in a more supinated position. That person's brain is going to start sensing the ground underneath floor number four too much. And when, you're sent, and when that becomes the default position, you will no longer be able to pronate the right foot and you will never, no longer be able to switch to your left side. Pronation of a right foot has to go with a body shifting to the left. But if a, a visual system will not allow that to happen when it's threatened. So he's never going to pronate that right foot and there will never be an accompanying shift to the left not because biomechanically he wouldn't be able to do it, because his brain is not allowing it to happen. What you need more of is floor number one and two right behind that left heel. So your left heel is floor number one and two. That's the left side of your body. That's heel strike. That's a hamstring and an adductor and a glute medius on the left side. But the, again, the problem is when your brain gets so dependent on the outside of that right foot on the, on the, uh, in the supinated position, you can't get to that left side. A lot of people can't get to that left side because of this situation. Their brain is sensing too much ground underneath floor number four, and it's become their default position to operate in, not because of their visual system, it's usually fine. This gentleman and myself, we were visually driven, that was our problem. But most people have just simply forgotten how to pronate a right foot that goes along with heel strike on the left side, so their pelvis never actually turns to the left, so they never get on their left side. So that will happen. Uh, you'll see a lot of uh, right tibial external rotation. All right, so the right tibia will start to turn out along with uh, quite often the right foot. You will often see someone who cannot flex. So if you look in picture number one, he cannot flex his, his back, particularly on the left side. That's left thoracic flexion. He's, his back is too tight. The back is staying tight because he's never on that left side. When we put glasses on him, he was able to, when he, when, I, I think he wasn't wearing his glasses, 
So the next time I saw him, he brought his glasses and then he had them on and he could flex his spine. So he could actually reach forward. So again, he was, that was a visual issue. So, but, but even with it, without it, this is gonna be very difficult for people who are in that same pattern. If they're stuck on the outside of that right foot, when they get on their left side, the body can't let go because there's too much threat. The left side is probably too unstable. So they'll be limited in thoracic flexion. And what you will not be able to do is get into this left AFIR, left ZOA position. Your brain is not gonna be acknowledging left visual space. That right shoulder will never move back enough because the right side of your body is always forward. So these are just typical PRI stuff. This is what we're always looking for. Left ZOA, meaning the left diaphragm, you can compress your left side. Left AFIR simply means that your left hip is shifted back. You're on your left leg truly. And if you're on your left leg truly, the right side can open up so that whole right side stays relaxed. So you won't be able to do that. Um, and then, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Oh, no, this is a good one. 2018, you see my right, the, the right side of my head is completely down and my body is completely shifted over my right side. And it's a little hazy, but in 2022, you can see my right ear has, and my the right side of my head has popped up and my body is way straighter. 2018, I didn't have glasses yet. That was still a visual and dental issue. The visual system drove my malocclusion, my jaw position, most likely. You never know completely, but that was likely the order of events. So 2018, that is me in the same, if he stays in that position for too long, that could end up being him. And once that head tilts, that is now a vestibular system issue. His brain doesn't know where he is. And he's constantly in this position. Well, me, my brain did not know where I was. And that was the problem. The, all the sensory inputs were wrong, completely wrong. I even had hearing loss that I didn't know about. And so it put me over that protected right side. The muscles are not the issue. It's the brain that is getting sensory input that is then providing the sense, the, the muscular output, that's the issue. Sensory input is the issue. Most people do not have anything going on up here that's significant. What they have lost is the sense of the ground underneath the left foot because they're floor number one and two, because they're losing, they've already over-referenced as we call it. They're too sensitive or their brain is always using the outside of that right foot or the heel of the right foot, not just the outside, but also the, the heel of the right foot because that's the normal right stance position. That's what your brain would sense. That has become its norm and it patterns all of your movement off of one heel, the right foot in a supinated position, and it no longer patterns your movement over the left heel in a supinated position. And so you don't have two anymore. You just have one, the right side.